Retrotech Ralph is proudly sponsored by my friends at One Click Print. However you want your prints, they offer quality and premium service on a variety of materials. Visit them at oneclickprint.com. Hi guys, Retro Tech Ralph. Another Atari 2600? Yes, but this, oh, I, I do wish that I could say this was the one that I grew up with. However, this is the exact type, the black Vader one, that I, the four switch Vader that I had. We basically had a the six switch Woody. It broke within about two months and then dad bought one of these. And I absolutely loved the, the, the design, it just changed a little bit, instead of having the difficulties over here, they put them on the bike, and so that's the only difference mainly between the whole lot of it, it's just ridiculous. But, but it's on eBay a, a while ago, and it's kind of, I don't know, I mean, it's prime for a modding, but here's my problems with this. Bought this, I'm not sure if it works or not. Right, the power on, feels like it's really, it's not right. That click. That feels fine, that feels fine. The power on off is probably knackered or something's not right on the board. I didn't really think you could move the entire lot with it being on board. <sighs> I have tested this with power, it doesn't do anything. So instead of trying this and then whatever, then we're gonna just basically go through it. I've took the screws out already. They're over here, you can't see that because the camera's not angled right. Well, one's there. But Let's get into this and, oh, oh, come here, look at you, this is a good sign in it, oh, that lovely goo, even on the side here, this is, this has been used, loved, and whatever, this is where I come in, I mean, luckily, there's no um, planetary problem that would cause anything, Oh, what, that, is, that is stuck, there we go. Another line of crap there. The only problem which actually would um, mean you could catch something from anything like this. This has actually been in the garage for months. Okay, that's a bit weird. Well, every one of my um, teardowns, repairs and all that sort of stuff, I have never had a massively bad... Um, yeah, and they're massively bad, covered in cockroaches, you've got a wasp nest inside. Never any problems like that. Uh, this, I don't know. So it's easy getting into these. There's four screws, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, yes. Take the lid off if you can, if not to the bottom off. With this already being out, that's a laugh, isn't it? With this already being these two screws here, nipping the whole lot in, it's this why this was loose. However, I'm not fully convinced this has never been opened. So let's get rid of the, these just want to stick it in the sink and washing. I mean, if you want to really dig into these, that is one solid piece of plastic. This front part will unclip. If you can, be careful not to break the plastics, but I need to get this off anyway so I can clean better. Gives me more of an edge. I can get something off with. Oh, I don't know if this is stuck in place with glue or whatever. Oh, them corner bits there don't want to come out. So I'll have to try something a bit better. Trying to get, get that off. But that panel will come off and it's not. So you can see inside there, it does want cleaning. The only thing I don't want to do with the other one is there's a sticker on the back, so it's made from Ireland. Be a bit careful with the back there to see what I can do. Cable comes off, it's just a standard little phono socket on the end of an RF. Can mod this easy enough anyway, but this is. Um, hmm. Right, let's have a look. This might be something as simple as the switch doesn't want to work. For some reason, these are meant to come together as like an earth, even though they're there. That bit there isn't on, neither is this one here. 
It's only it's just with foil tape. I've got foil tape, that's not a problem, I can redo that. But it's kind of... I'm not sure if somebody's been in, I don't know what they're doing, and off you go. Now I'm going to be careful with these, because these foam circles are, one, they need cleaning, two, they are degrading, because time, and I don't really want to replace them, although I can, easy enough, with something. Put some felt, some, if I've got any felt, a bit of material, cut a circle, circle out the middle, done. I'm trying to get into this. Because I want to take this off here. There's a pin peg there, I need to just twist round so it's straight. One on the side here. One on the side there. Just try and keep them straight so this, this box section will come off. I can't tell if there's one of these things. No, there isn't. One up top of here. Looks pretty much straight. And one on the side here. Now that will lift off as well as the tape, so I need to remove the tape. It's all original, I suppose. There we go, one off. Two off. That just should, if you get them all straight, should lift straight off. This is, this is dirty. Dirty Vader, I think I'll call this video. Dirty, dirty Vader. It's only because I call it Vader because it's all black. Okay. E e ooh, okay. There's a big line across there. That is probably a marker pen where somebody's going, yeah, it works, done. I've got bits of crap everywhere. Luckily, it's not anything major. So, this bottom bit should come off. I'd like to, if there was ever a possibility of getting a clear case, to put one of these back in, and not have the metal parts on, so you can see straight in. Looks like there's a patch there with a diode going across. So some sort of repair has been done. Not entirely sure why, if and how. Let's push this through as well. Actually, if that will come off. See, with the switch as well, that is... I think WD-40 might just free that, because I was suspecting that that might have been broken, but it's not. This is stuck in for some reason. A bit better. Pushing the tab. It should, in theory, come out. But it might also not. See, all these boards are virtually the same, except like I said, the, the, the changing part there for the extra switch, move it over here. That is a little different. Marker pen there as well. Or crayon at least, anyway. Switch there's loose, and there's a bit of rust there as well. So I suspect there may be more problems inside, maybe. All pins are okay on the joystick ports. Power supply looks fine. Okay, so what does that do then? Why is that missing? The S200. I mean, it, it, there's certain bits on here that just need redoing. I'm not fully convinced of it, but why would he leave that on production as a, it's twisted round? I might see if I can replace that cap as well. Because there's only that uh, one small one there. Bit puzzled why this won't come up. One there as well. So you've got three caps on this board. Some of the solid caps and whatever else are on, but that's fine. Okay. I'm going to tidy up a bit because there's fluff everywhere. It's, it's just not a good working environment to do. Everything's covered in fluff and I'm getting filthy. Now, don't worry, nothing's wrong. I, well, yeah, something is wrong. It's been a while, I have cleaned, I've oiled, I've stripped, and I can't find out what's wrong with this. The television's got such a, uh, but it's squeaking as well. However, sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. I'm not convinced that, that it's not just what the problem was to start with, which was this switch. I mean, it does run, move very smoothly now. However, 
There are six contacts on the back of it. I'm not fully convinced that the switch itself doesn't actually work. But I think, without going too deep into this, it's either going to be... <sighs> power switch. Don't see why it would be. However, it was absolutely knackered to start with. So what I'm going to do is, instead of ordering a new one, I'm going to take off the the colour black and white switch, because that works perfectly fine. It feels absolutely solid. That one feels good, except it's a bit, little bit looser now than that one. So I'm not fully convinced it isn't that. The capacitor definitely wants removing, because that's the power one. That That's not bothered about this one and that one, because it just doesn't really exist. But it doesn't really matter. But I'm just not convinced why the cable's like that. Very weird. It's a very quick production line, or I don't know. Power regulator itself doesn't seem to get very hot, so again, might be that, just giving out the wrong power. I've already reseated all three of these chips, and all three are not hot, they are warm, which means they are still they are being used. If they were red hot, then yeah, there'd be, there'd be something majorly wrong with them. If they were freezing cold, they wouldn't be used. So what I'm going to do, and I'll go away a little while, I'm going to unsolder these two and swap them round. Um, I need to mark one up actually, so it's going to be the right, that one. So that, I mean, blue one is the good one. Hopefully the permanent marker sticks to um, WD-40. Other than that, it's a possibility it might be the MOS chips. It could be either either the memory or the, the TSU, or TCU, could be that. So what I'm going to do is swap these around, change that, change that and see where I go from there, basically. Because I'm a little bit confused why it isn't fully working when there's nothing, literally, the both sides, there's nothing that is visual. There's no resistor that's burned out, there's no nothing. I thought that one there, was it? No. It looks, it looks fine. So I'm not convinced either either way of what is wrong with this. Quite some while later, and then a bit of gardening as well, I have replaced, swap these two around, switches, I have replaced the capacitor, I did the other two as well because I had spares, so I thought why not, I've not done the voltage regulator yet, we'll get to that if it's needed, so I'm going to test and see what happens, so we have plug in, this is the right polarity because I have that, and I'm going to that switch off and I'm going to turn the power switch on, if this goes bang for some reason at least we'll know exactly what it is, and it's in the centre of the screen. No, it's a good thing so far. The television's on the right channel, but it's not got the volume, I don't think. So, on. It's doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay. Right, so it should have done something at least, but put cartridge in. What is wrong with this? Something really isn't right with it, is it? That's the positive, the arrows go that way, definitely the right way on that. Caps, positive to the bottom, positive to the top, so they're fine. What have I missed? Come on, Ralph, what am I missing? There's absolutely nothing on screen now. So, what are I doing right? I'm not even recognising anything. Plug socket is fine on 9 volts. Perhaps it is a completely different switch after all. It shouldn't be. Just not on off. Hmm. Oh, we have a picture, but it looks like it's very out of tune, but then it's gone again. It's obviously the signal strength of this isn't that good, so it's kind of getting mixed up between what it needs and what it, it's got. I have got something that's very out of tune. I'm going through the settings on here. Let me go through manual tuning. Um, I've got a Full signal nearly. Let's have a look. 37 maybe. Oh, 
So you heard that then. It's definitely somewhere. Normal static. 40, 39, 38, 37, 36. Right, okay, we're back to as we were then. It's got some weird lines on it, and it's making a squeak. FT off, or FT. No. Okay, so I'm thinking, voltage reg. I will try that now with the squeak off. I'll try replacing that, and if it's not that, it's gonna be one of these three chips. Ah oh well, fun continues. Now, voltage originally complete, changed, and I've even thermal pasted it to the heatsink, and the heatsink's thermal pasted to the earth. So, overkill, yes, I understand. But, why not? I've got tons of it anyway. So, let's check. There's no guarantee this is going to work, although a regulator would explain a little bit that it's not getting the right power. That is switched off, that is on. TV's on the wrong channel. Oh, come on. Live TV. Right, um, that's not actually, that's just static. I don't know why the television's doing that. So put reactor in. Let's check if this is doing anything. That's not, that's a black screen. It's not like you need the power to run around and get everything. Pac-Man, again, that's not doing right either. So either the parts I've put on have been defective, or it runs it down to cartridge slot. No. Exactly the same screen as what I had before. So, apologise for that. It's got to be one of these three chips. Has to be. So, I've got spare. Well, I've got spare. I have got other Atari 2600s. I'm going to swap the chips over. See what, if anything. I don't want to order all three of these. It'll probably cost me more than what this thing's actually worth anyway. But if I swap one over with one of the 2600s I've got, hopefully the... Oh, so I've got about three of the juniors. Hopefully one of those will have each one of these and I can swap over. For the minute, I'm gonna just pause it there for a second and then go and faff for a bit and come back later. So the answer to the question of can I swap chips over between the junior and the 2600 is a no. The boards are virtually the same size, but different chips and they are not socketed, so it doesn't make it easy. I'll work on this and see what I can do. For the minute, we're on pause again. Okay, I've gone through a little bit too much of fault diagnosis and cleaning and all sorts. What I think I need to do is I was on the right track. The juniors, different chips. I'm convinced that my six switch woody, I will pull the chips out and test individual which one of these is gone. I think it's this one. I'm almost certain it's that one because it just, it just looks a bit too shiny, that means it's overheated. And the other two, that looks fine, that's, I don't know. So I'm gonna have to pull that out of its box and faff around with it and swap chips over. That's all I can do, it's either that or spend 20 pound per chip on eBay for something, which I'm not prepared to do. If that's the case, then yeah, if it needs one, it needs one. But I'm not buying, buying all three just in case. So, with that in mind, part one's done with. I think we'll leave that as is, and we'll have a little bit of, yeah, faffing off camera, and then come back to this another stage, and see what happens. So with that in mind, please like, subscribe, follow me on social media, help, help out the channel as much as you can, and donate, or Patreon, or, or anything and everything. Links are in the description below. So with that in mind, thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.